Tonight on Film Chunky Live, did James Gunn tease what the costume is going to look like for Superman with a director's chair that David Corden Sweat's dog is sitting in? Eh. And other DCU updates as well. Wonder Woman 3, Linda Carter says that if it's going to happen, it's going to be because the fans are going to demand it. But after Wonder Woman 84, I don't know if that demand is there. Box office, of course, we had Godzilla and Kong that came out this weekend that did a lot better than what was projected. And then, of course, we're going to be talking about the first quarter when it comes to studios and the box office. The Matrix, 25 years. Hard to believe that it's been 25 years since that iconic movie, that that movie that changed cinema came out. Man, let's talk about that and so much more tonight on Film Junkie Live. Man, The Matrix, I mean... It's crazy when you think about it. I mean, it really questioned realities, and it still does to this day because it's like, you know what? I'm not actually here. I've pre-recorded this for you to watch when I go live, but I'm not actually even live because there's still a delay. And every ah, my head hurts. It's right now. now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. <laughs> children how's it going guys oh it's the end of monday thank god right even though like maybe some people out there might have had the day off today i don't know it's always a weird thing when it comes to easter i think we all deserve a day off from work whether it's monday or the friday i don't know easter's a weird holiday to me i don't know anyways guys make sure you smash that like thumbs up Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, do all that stuff, share the stream, everything. Hopefully you guys are doing well. And hopefully you guys, uh, you know, you want to talk some uh, craziness, some crazy uh, movie nerdiness right here. We're going to be talking about Superman, of course, Wonder Woman 3, the box office, and then, of course, some celebration when it comes to The Matrix. That's right. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. So, All right. Let's see who's out there right now. We got, uh, you know, yeah, I know it's, it is, uh, it is April Fools, but I don't know. I, 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 I get tired of the whole April Fools thing because, of course, you look on your feed and you're just like, all right, what is true, what is not true, and then everybody tries to make these jokes. I don't know. I'm kind of over the whole April Fools thing. I was over it a long time ago, but hey, what could he do? We got Ryan. Happy April Fools, I guess. What's going on, James M? We got a hoy hoy, Mr. Jason McKenzie. Always great to see you, sir. Always great to see you. We got Game City Savior. I will watch Smallville next year. <laughs> so not this year, but you're going to watch it next year. I still haven't watched it either. So I eventually got to watch it myself. But, you know. What's going on? Yo! What's going on, Zach P? And then we got Caladia Plays. Good to see you as well. And Tet, what is happening? Crazy weekend, so tired. Really? What kind of weekend did you have there, huh? JD McRae is here. Good to see you. Let's be frank. April Fool kind of sucks. Yeah, it kind of does when you're in this world. You know, it was fun. It's fun when you're a kid. And I guess if you're doing prank stuff, I don't know. Like to me, like now, I, I have not given a shit about April Fool's. Since I was probably a teenager, I don't know. It's I, I just don't really care. And especially now, like, you know, when I'm like trying to talk about news, have a discussion, have a show. I'm like, I always have to worry about this day because it's like, all right, what's BS, what's not? And you have to be you have to like really make sure that there's not and there is some things that we're gonna be talking about that could have could have been considered BS. Could have been absolute bullshit. Just call it out. That's bullshit. But then people are like, no, no, this is actually legit. This is legit shit right here. So, yeah, it does kind of suck when it comes to this part right here. You just got to be like, you know, you got to make sure. You just got to make sure. You just got to make sure, you know. Uh, is the yellow S on the cape? That is the question there, Sherman, and good to see you. Um, I don't think I've seen your name before, but I uh, appreciate you uh, stopping by. But, yes, that is one of the questions that we do have when it comes to the Superman costume. Will it have the S on the cape? Will it have the S on the cape? All right. We got, of course, Mr. Nobody right here. 
I watched it. I was trying to make you say, ah, okay, that's what you were doing. How dare you? Tricking me. Tricking me. What's going on, Marble Man? What's going on? Good to see you. I like your, uh, <laughs> I like your avatar right there. Dave, did you see the Billy, uh, Billy T? No, I did not. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm going to have to check that out. That's probably a good interview right there, too. That's cool. You're my hero, Shane. You're my hero. You are the hero that we deserve. But, uh, yes, guys, appreciate, uh, yeah, like I said, April Fool's, always just a weird thing. But, uh, you know, and then Easter, always a weird holiday because I don't really, I don't know. I, I, when it comes to Easter, I don't really consider it a holiday because you don't get a day off from work. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing here? Seriously. It's funny because I was having like a discussion because I went to my mom's, you know, my mom made Easter. She made Easter dinner. My brother and my nephew were there, my brother's girlfriend. And, you know, it's just like, OK, we always do this. We do this thing where it's like, OK, we got to celebrate Easter. And I get what Easter represents. I mean, obviously, it's always like a little weird. Even, you know, we talk. I think we even talked about this on the Vox stream where it's just like the fact that it's like, oh, you got an Easter bunny and eggs. That's that's a weird combination. But of course, it's a whole little pagan kind of thing. But it's just like Easter is not a specific day, not a specific day. First off, just like what Thanksgiving is not a specific day either. But it's always like the last Thursday, just like it's always the last Sunday. With the, I don't know, it's always just like a weird thing. It's like you think that if we have Christmas on a specific day all the time, why would we not have Easter on a specific day all the time? And then, like I said, there are like places, people around the world that take the day off. They have like Good Friday off or Easter Monday off or something like that. Here in America, we don't get jack shit. We just go Happy Easter, find some eggs, color some eggs. Bite the fucking ears off a chocolate Easter bunny, eat some ham, and that's it. But you don't get a day off. It's weird. I don't know. That's just me, though. I just, I'm complaining. That's all. Complaining that I don't get a day off, I guess you could say. But it's just that it's a weird holiday. It's a weird holiday. But I still, you know, it was still great going to my mom's, Mama Film Junkie's house. She made she made a great dinner, some prime rib. And, you know, we had a good time and we watched baseball, baseball, because baseball is back, baby. Got to love that. That's what I did this weekend. I was I was pretty lazy. I was I probably had one of my laziest weekends this weekend because, you know, I've been really just hitting it hard, posting, posting clips, posting videos. I've been hitting it pretty hard. So this weekend, I kind of just like pulled back. And just watched baseball because I love baseball. You guys know I love baseball. And I was just watching baseball this entire weekend and just loving it. Loving the fact that uh, that baseball is back. And, you know, I, I, I'm not all eyes are on the Dodgers, which I love that because, you know, they spent almost a almost a billion dollars. I wish uh, Jose was in the chat. Is Jose in the chat? He's not in the chat. But, you know, the Dodgers spent almost a billion dollars on their team, so all eyes are on them. Everybody's going like, the Dodgers need to win the entire thing with how much money they put out there. But when it comes to my Giants, my Giants made a lot of moves this uh, this offseason, moves I did not agree with and moves I did. And what I've seen so far, I'm okay with. I'm okay with. I'm not saying that they're going to, like, go all the way. But they, I, I think they have a pretty decent team, even though, like, there's some things where I'm like, ah. But, uh, yeah, Easter's true meaning is peeps. I know. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, Easter is an interesting holiday. But, yeah, baseball's back. A lot of things and everything. So, hey, look at that. We got the uh, Eye of Stone podcast. Hey, those guys have a, a movie, a short film that's been coming out. It's been, like, a, a lot of uh, short film talk out there when it comes to uh people within the people within the uh the film junkie community obviously we talked you know talk to axel axel you know, droga who's in the the chat right now of course he talked about his fan film that he just made a couple weeks ago we had the geek first guys talking about their film and hopefully get the eye of stone guys to get to come back on and think it will happen we'll get them back on the vodka stream to talk about their short film which we already kind of talked about before but yeah oof easy there easy there sorry hiccups 
What's going on, Super Gorilla X Vlogs? Hello, is it? Uh, yeah, April Fools. Yeah, no, don't worry. No, no gags tonight when it comes to this stuff. What's going on, Azteca? At least Dodgers go all out, unlike my team's Jerry Cheeps. Oh yeah, eh. And good to see Elisa also and Stephanie. I see you out there too. Good to see you too. Good to see you, ladies. All right, let's go ahead and start diving into some of this stuff. Where am I at here? Do I have, uh, do, of course I don't have everything all up because why would I do that? All right, so we'll get into all this right here. We'll get in some tweets. We'll get into the tweets. I'm not gonna go back too far because you know, I think that's good. I mean, obviously what happened over this weekend too was, um, I mean, well, I mean, there's so many things, so many things that I wanna like kind of get into at the start here. I mean, obviously talking about, I love that baseball's back. Love that. You know, I thought about talking about Batman Gate some more, but we talked about that on Vodka Stream. I don't think, it, again, Batman Gate, Batman Gate is one of those things where it was just like, this is going nowhere. And I think a lot of people were going, fuck this. This is going nowhere. Who is this guy? This guy's really trying to claim that. Matt Reeves ripped off his Batman script when the Batman script, every, anything every, Batman related, Batman stories. Ooh, Batman's taking on the Riddler. Whoa, that's crazy. What? Batman's doing this. Batman's doing that. And, you know, we all just kind of went like, this is a nothing case. And sure enough, that's what ended up happening is they dismissed that case and they actually put copy infringement on Mr. Wozniak, which was hilarious. And, you know, it was funny, too, when he was given a platform by certain people who were just, you know, sadly, were just going like, yeah, we don't like what Matt Reeves is doing because it's all if it's not Zack Snyder's Batman, we don't want it. So it's just it's sad that that was actually it turned into something like that. But I mean, I love the fact that that just got dismissed and it got turned back onto that onto him, which is like, yeah, the guy totally he follows me on Twitter. And I even mentioned this, but it's just kind of funny. Because he changed his Twitter handle. He, it used to be Batman Gate. It's no longer Batman Gate. And he's doing other stuff when it comes to comic books and everything. And I was like, good. Yes, do that. You don't need to uh, You don't need to be doing all that. But yeah, that was like something that happened over the weekend, which was, you know, nothing we didn't really, really need to talk about. Well, we talked about it, uh, of course. Uh, but, you know, there were some McFarlane toys that came out. And there's this, this, you know what? Let's talk about some of these McFarlane's that were coming out that there was like a whole like uh, presentation that happened over the weekend. If I could, yeah, but see, I, I don't think I can find, I can, I'm going to have to scroll like crazy because, okay, we're good. We're good. All right, let's go through some uh, McFarlane's right here. Like what happened at this, uh, this is actually pretty sweet right here. So, so we got this uh, Twitter handle right here, pre, I don't even know. Uh, so, Already off the bat, I love this right here. You got 40-year-old virgin, of course, Steve Carell, after he gets the waxing. You got the dude. You got the dude, Big Lebowski, also right there. And you also got Matthew McConaughey from Days and Confused. All right, all right, all right. You know what I like about these high school girls? I keep getting older. They stay at the same age, which is a horrible line. If you said that in reality, holy shit. But isn't it kind of crazy that Matthew McConaughey got famous for saying that line? Because it's, especially with all the things that are happening right now, when we talk about, like, you know, what's going on in Hollywood and all the underage stuff, that line is pretty gross. If you think about it, it's pretty gross. But somehow it's iconic. Very strange. But yeah. And then we got some, you know, we're going to be talking about the Matrix 25 years. We've got some Matrix, Matrix McFarlane's happening. That is awesome. So, yeah, some of these were just like shown right here. We got some more uh, DC Universe stuff right here. And, you know, I mean, they're just doing, this is all 2025 right here. Look at all these right here Nightwing, Flash, Jay Garrick, Flash, Batgirl. Well, you know. Cassandra Kane version and then a couple of lanterns right there so that's pretty sweet I mean we're just like they're just showing all kinds of this is this was the thing that I was like oh my god there's the Batman forever there's the Batman forever line right here I still they they always do this though anytime McFarlane comes out especially when it comes to Batman 
they always do one costume. And final, I mean, like, I, I, I'm eventually going to start adding to my McFarlane figures because obviously I got the entire Justice League line. And it sucks because I always wanted the standard. I, I want the, I wanted it, and I, I will eventually get it because they finally released it, but they do have the BVS costume in McFarlane, and I don't have it yet. I have the tactical, tactical Batman. But uh, when it comes to Batman Forever, they have that the sonar suit, which is a great looking suit. But I want the fucking the Panther suit. I want that. But I, I, yeah. But I just love how they actually have the bat from his like little nightmare thing. That's pretty crazy. And then they got Lucius right here with the Batmobile. That's pretty funny. It's like, all right, let's do a Lucius one. And uh, let's uh, add some more with uh, Starfire, Boomerang, and Penguin right here. You know, just added some more people. A little, I mean, that looks pretty like, yeah, it's Batman 66 right there. And then, of course, the animated series line that's going to be coming out. I love that they got Bruce Wayne in his brown suit. And then you even got a Joker vehicle right here. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then you got some rock and rollers right here. What? Yes, that's right. Iron Maiden, they got Ozzy, they got Alice Cooper, and, of course, Rob Zombie right here. But, yeah, Eddie from Iron Maiden. So, yeah, I mean, that's what was pretty much being shown when it came to that whole thing right there. And I thought, well, that's pretty sweet. Nothing wrong with that. Some cool little uh, McFarland stuff that's been happening. And, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> Jeez. I laughed. You have to laugh at this. I mean, there's been more than one drawing with this. But, yeah, when it came to Easter yesterday, I just thought it was kind of funny. You know, Ghostbusters. I mean, if Jesus were to, were, were to return, you know, why not trap him? And I thought that was actually pretty funny. So, And then rest in peace, man. Chance Perdomo. This was, wow, gone too soon, man. Gone way too soon. Terrible. So young, 27 years old, 27 years old. I didn't see Sabrina, but I did watch Gen V, and I thought he was great in Gen V, the whole series. And they were about to start shooting Gen V this month, April. They were going to do season two of Gen V. Now it's postponed indefinitely because now Mr. Chance right here, he died in a motorcycle accident. I don't know what the details were when it came to this accident, but Jesus sad man like wow when we saw that over the weekend it was like geez so may uh condolences to his uh family and friends and everything that was just terrible just absolutely terrible just absolutely awful so but of course yes the 85th anniversary of batman also you know and of course we're all talking about it. I mean, it's just like one of those things where it's like, wow, Batman's been around for so long, 85 years, pretty crazy. And, I mean, w when it comes to Batman, I mean, he's just always going to be loved. Always going to be loved. Batman's always going to be loved. And there's always going to be versions of Batman that people don't like and people do like. And there's just, we got more Batman coming. We got two versions live action that are going to be coming out. We got more comic books that are going to be coming out. More figurines like I just showed you. More McFarlane's. Batman's always going to be around, but yes, happy birthday to Batman, 85 years, 85 years, and I love like all the different arts that was being shown, I won't show it all right now, you know, I posted of course the first issue of uh, Detective Comics that had the Batman in it, so, but yeah, pretty crazy that it's been 85 freaking years, all right, we have this right here, okay, so, Last week, I talked about how Henry Cavill is an awesome human being and how he is very much like Superman because he saved his co-star that is from the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, Mr. Petter, Pettifer, I think that's what his name was. And we talked about that. We only just heard about the, uh, the story, but now we have video of him talking about Henry Cavill rescuing him after falling off a boat. Best, best moments on set of uh, this movie for me is probably being saved by this guy. He probably doesn't remember too much, but I, we were on these ships and at nighttime, uh, we would transition from these, I guess these, not dinghies, but um, boats onto the, to the main ship. And uh, because the waves were so 
big, whatever, the boats would sometimes clash, you know? And so I was putting my foot out to try and uh, avoid someone who was entering at the front of the boat onto the ship, and I nearly fell in. And this guy grabbed me just as I was about to fall into the ocean at 2 o'clock in the morning and pretty much saved my life. So <laughs> maybe not a moment of filming, but a, a huge moment of gratitude. What, what people don't know is that I was actually trying to push him in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got my ball, and I was like, oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! Oh, you gotta love Henry right there. But yeah, so now we have the video. Like, I was wondering what the context was when it came to this. That's what I said last week. I'm like, why was that the case? So it's nice to get the, an explanation of, like, what happened. So he just kind of grabbed him right there. Again, Superman instincts coming from Henry Cavill right there. Gotta love that. I can't wait for this movie. I cannot <laughs> wait for this movie. This movie is going to be so freaking awesome. So freaking awesome. All right, what else we got here? Oh, we got this right here, too. <laughs> ah, Jack Dylan Grazer, of course, um, who plays Freddy in Shazam, was asked about, hey, you know, with the new DCU and everything that's been happening, are you going to be showing up in the DCU? Is there going to be more Shazam and your character and everything like that? And I like what Jack actually had to say right here because he wasn't just like holding back and trying to be like, oh, you know, he actually kind of like there's some truths that come out when it comes to at least this interview right here. This was at WonderCon. Last time we talked was for Shazam 2. Mm -hmm. I know you you don't ru war run Warner Brothers, but do you I think? Don't, don't what, 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 what do you think? Do you think are you sure about Shazam that? Three? I mean, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. I don't know, man. I don't want to yeah. steal the thunder from first of all it's from Spiderwick, but I will say probably not. I don't know if there was an article that David Sandberg posted. He said I will never make another superhero movie again because I guess Shazam 2 tanked. So oh, no. um, I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. I liked it, a but lot of people did. Box office was like suck this, yeah. and. Um, yeah. Whatever. If it happens, yeah. it happens, and I think that if it does happen, I also I, who's to say that my word is any authority? But if it does happen, it'll probably be from a, a Black Adam thing. Black oh, Adam okay. will invite Shazam into the world. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? Blunt. I mean, that's good. Yes, because David F. Sandberg, after two superhero movies, he was like, I'm done. I'm done. Which I. Don't blame him. I don't blame him. And yeah, I mean, I like how uh, Jack right here was like, yeah, yeah, the uh, box office was, you know, because it was, it was, it was bad. It was bad. Even though like I enjoyed the movie, I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one. And there was things I had issues with, of course, but I just like, he was just like, okay. But then he also said like, yeah, if it's going to be anything, it's going to be that Black Adam guy, which of course he's talking about Dwayne Johnson and I don't know. He's talking really, really fast, as he does. Um, nice sweater, too, by the way. But, yeah, I mean, he's just kind of going like, yeah, it's 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 not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. We don't need it to happen. I think we're all kind of moving on from when it comes to at least that Shazam world. The first one's great. Second one was okay. We could leave it at that, right? We could leave it at that. Last time. Oh, man. Of course, yeah, got that. Uh, did you know that? Did you guys know that Paramount? Apparently Paramount at one point was going to do a Dune movie and somebody actually, uh, somebody uh, uh, by the name of Jock420, wow, geez, I wonder what he likes to do, but um, they posted this right here. This is from, this is uh, art, concept art right here, circa 2010, so this is 14 years ago, obviously producing some spice right here, but yes. There's some art right here. Space mining. Spice mining, not space mining. Spice mining. Yeah. So there's some art right there when it comes to like an unproduced, a produced, a, a movie, a, a Dune movie that was supposed, that was in the works from Paramount. And, you know, so that, I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, there's some Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes stuff that came out, posters and uh, a new trailer and everything. So that was uh, pretty interesting. Did you guys see this? All right. Who watched Roadhouse? I mean, did you watch Roadhouse for just like, you know, freaking Gyllenhaal's abs? I mean, my God, dude was like crazy ripped and busted his ass, of course, you know, to, to play the role. I am a fan of the original. And I was even talking about it with my dad, too. It's like, yeah, there's changes, of course, to the actual story. But for the most part, it is about like somebody who's protecting 
the roadhouse from somebody and Conor McGregor, of course, being way over the top. And I didn't think I was going to see that much of t Conor McGregor. It was like, OK, you see a half naked Gyllenhaal and then you see, well, anyways. But uh, according to new numbers that just came out when it came to Roadhouse and then, of course, the whole debate on whether it should have been put out in theaters. Well, I think Amazon probably wishes that they put it out in theaters for at least a little bit. Mistake? Yeah. According to Amazon, the film starring Jake Gyllenhaal has reached 50 million viewers globally on first 10 days of release, making it the biggest MGM hit ever on Prime Video. But I'm sure the streamer's heads will counterpart claiming that the film would never have reached such an audience in theaters. So yeah, 50 million viewers worldwide. But that begs the question, would that have gotten that in the movie theater would would would, have, would people have shown up and put their asses in the seat bought some popcorn for the movie if it was actually in theater see that's the thing nowadays we always have to look at it like would that have happened i mean obviously no there wouldn't have been like that many people 50 million people would not have gone to the movie theater there's going to be somebody and maybe somebody i don't know maybe Somebody like Steven, who's good with numbers and analytics, you would have to actually like take like a, a chunk of that. And that's what what we probably could project as who would show up to the movie. And maybe they have people that are already doing this. That's what I kind of wonder when it comes to streaming services, whether they decide to put it out in the theater or not. It's like, all right, is this going to benefit us? What is the number that we might of people that might actually go out and pay to go see this movie as opposed to just watching it? on their service at home because honestly it's like all right so if roadhouse got released and there was another movie that maybe i was looking forward to that was just like a that seemed like a movie that's gonna be like like say it would have got released this week with monkey man i want to see monkey man it looks freaking awesome and i would pick that over roadhouse so i probably would be like i'm just gonna go see roadhouse i just watch it at home so yeah, it's like one of those questions where it's like you don't know how many people would actually go out to go see it. That's why when I when people like talk about streaming and box office and when they talk about, oh, yeah, if they were to release like like I, I get this all the time, you know, from like diehard fans that go like, oh, man, if they release Zack Snyder's Justice League and IMAX all over the world, that thing would clean house. I'm like, yeah, but you don't know that. Would it? You know, and then it's like, you know, and they have people that are analyzing going like well okay if we were to lease it how much would it cost and how much do you think we would actually make profit you know so i don't know it's a big thing and jake gyllenhaal came out and said hey we just want the most people to see it to me it wasn't a movie where i was going i need to see this on the big screen i need to see it on the big screen i was just like i was happy with watching it a couple weekends ago here so and i enjoyed it i did enjoy it though I really enjoyed it. <sighs> this is not an April Fool's joke, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, a lot of people are going, geez, and this is what sucks about April Fool's Day is when you see information out there, you see something on your feed, you have to not react right away because God knows if it's going to be, if it's real or not. But apparently, apparently, and this is, you know, obviously we, we got to take it with a grain of salt, but it does make sense. The first Joker 2 trailer will be unveiled for everyone during the Warner Brothers CinemaCon panel on April 9th. Oh, that's nine days away. That's right. So CinemaCon is happening in a week. And of course, we're going to get some goodies that come out of there. But apparently, we're not going to get everything that comes out of there. Of course not. They keep things just specifically for the con. Sadly, I'm not going one of these days. Maybe next year I'll be able to go. But yes, we're going to finally get... And we already heard, I think from Todd Phillips himself or people, somebody that's involved with Joker 2, we are going to get the first Joker 2 trailer next month. And that makes sense that it's going to be at CinemaCon. Cannot wait to get an idea of what's going on here. I think this is going to be another awesome movie, another little masterpiece, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be interesting because it's so it's going to be different from the first one. But cannot wait for that. And we will be talking about it, discussing it. I'll react to it. I'll do it all. I'll sing along as well. You guys want to hear me sing? I'm sure you don't. You don't want to do that. 
Oh, and then we got some awesomeness right here. Rebel Moon, baby. That's right. We got something that uh, Zack Snyder posted right here that, uh, well, I mean, when it comes to photography and his photography, I'm all about it. I'm all about it, and, and he's all about showing us. Such an honor to work with Sir Anthony Hopkins, the voice of Jimmy in Rebel Moon. You can find a collection of my photography portraits of Rebel Moon on uh, As Soul Line, available in Europe. But yes, so if you guys want to uh, order this right here, pre-order, $150 right here. we got a whole book of portraits when it comes to Rebel Moon. So everything, even Zach pose, posing in some of these right there. Look at all these shots of all the different costumes and in this... The, this is him shooting these all, of course, in black and white and just something absolutely beautiful right here. So if you want to do that, grab that link. Do it. Grab it. I know. $150. Seems like it's pretty, you know, it might be a little steep for some people right now. But, I mean, I think that's some of the things that he's going to be displaying, of course, this week on Wednesday in New York City. He's going to be displaying some of his photography so if you're in New York City, make sure you check that out, too. That's going to be on Wednesday. But beautiful photography from the man himself. You got to love that. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> there was some controversy today. There was. Not just from, you know, April Fool's stupidness, but uh, there was some controversy when it comes to the Barbie movie. That's right, the Barbie movie. We're still talking about the Barbie movie and controversial takes when it comes to the Barb Barbie movie. And this is from, well, this is from a random person who uh, got asked a question about Barbie. And I, I, I didn't think I was going to wake up on Monday morning on April Fool's Day, the first day of April, to see the response to Barbie from Shakira. Did you guys see this? And how she responded to it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My sons absolutely hated it. They felt that it was emasculating, and I agree, to a certain extent. That's the quote that's been going around, and that's the headline, and people are upset, naturally. But, of course, what we have to do, folks, we always have to at least, let's get... The entire quotes, the entire context. Let's not just get one specific, one specific quote, because let's see what all she had to say right here. But yeah, here we go. Shakira says she and her sons found Barbie emasculating. The Colombian superstar wasn't a fan of Greta Gerwig's brand of fem feminism in the Oscar winning film. It won that it, it won it won Oscar for a song. Get out of here with your... Well, anyways. But yeah, talking to Allure. So Shakira answered bluntly, saying, My sons absolutely hated they were, uh, were masculine, and I agree to a certain extent. I'm raising two boys. I want them to feel powerful, too, while respecting women. I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men to also protect and provide. And then clarifying her comment by saying... I believe in giving women all the tools and the trust that we can do it all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. I think that men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose as well. We complement each other and that compliment should not be lost. Just because a woman can do it all doesn't mean she should. And that's from the interviewer right there taking, you know, the artist Ken and responded, why not share the load with people who deserve to carry it, who have a duty to carry it as well. So it's interesting seeing people respond because obviously people will just read the, the headline. And I think she actually gave a, when you see the whole thing in context, the full context of the quote, I think it's not a bad quote. And this is how she was raged, raised because she's Colombian. She, when it comes to her culture, it is, see, that's the thing is like, Nowadays, I mean, obviously, there's always going to be people that just get upset. Get upset if you're not if you're not with it. You're 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 a, a su white supremacist. You're racist. You're mis you're you're this. You're that. But you got to realize that not everybody has shares the same culture as you do. And sadly, when it comes to at least in America, when it comes to things the way they are now, 
they don't take they don't take in like the culture that people are coming from and you know being half hispanic myself and being like knowing that culture knowing similar culture it's not all the same obviously it's different countries and stuff like that i mean the whole I, how many times have i told you guys like the whole latinx thing the whole latinx or latinx when i hear people talk about that and when they're like so worried like like saying that and i always go to, 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 nobody gives a sh- to do not that is something made up from crazy liberal blue-haired white women they came up with that because they thought that oh no you shouldn't have latino latina even though the language itself is built off of masculine and feminine kind of you know that's the way the language is so you got to take into account for her culture that she's grown up with too now if you don't like it it's fine to me i don't really give a shit that's her opinion I'm perfectly fine with it, and it's, that's the way she looks at it. I just, I just hope it doesn't get to a point where she has to like come out and like apologize for that. To me, there's, there's nothing that bad of what she said. And when you get the full quote, it's like, okay, so that's the way she thinks. And again, I think it's just her culture and the way and her, the way that she was brought up and the way that she looks at things. And I think that's just, I think I can respect that. I can respect that. I mean, to me, I think when it comes to that movie, I've seen it twice, and it is it emasculating? I think they go for that, but then there's also like the 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 Ken plot, which is also like very pivotal to the story of him being like second and being emasculated. So I think she didn't when she watched the movie. I don't think she fully took that in that Ken's plot was kind of pushing back to the emasculating, and I think. Greta was trying to show that as much as possible. She wasn't trying to just be like, oh, this is a feminist movie. No, she was actually doing this too. It's like, yeah, but if we get too feminine, we get too feminist, guess what? This is the Ken's over here is going to like, you know, and I think that's when it comes to Barbie, that's what she was trying to do. Like she was going so over the top with all that, that this had to like get lifted up too. So that's why like you can't have, Barbie be successful without Ken's plot of like showing how he's feeling about the whole thing. I don't know. So I think she missed it when it came to that, but I understand where she's coming from. That's basically what I'm talking about. Anyways, I'm rambling, (laughs) rambling. Okay. I'm going to bless your guys' eyeballs and ears right now because When it comes to April Fool's Day and when it comes to Joker and animation, this is awesome right here. This is very, uh, very awesome right here. DM Gil, 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 say, Gil, say, I don't know. I'm trying to see, but this is like an animation right here when it comes to a bunch of Jokers. So check this out. This is so freaking cool right here. Oh, and everybody's heard about the bird. bird, 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 bird. Okay, I can't have that because that's a copyrighted song. But look at this right here. All the Jokers having fun with each other. But they're missing one Joker. Aw. <laughs> the Jared Little Joker. The Jared Little Joker is... <laughs> oh, man, the Jared Little Joker. Always... Always getting the shaft. But yeah, you got Caesar, you got Nicholson, you got Ledger, you got Hamill animated, you got all those Jokers. But yeah, sadly, the <laughs> little Joker gets left out. Left out. <laughs> Jeez. I just thought it was great. Absolutely fantastic right there. Absolutely fantastic. All right. And that's, I think, well, actually, there was one more thing that I did want to uh, talk about that I didn't wasn't part of the tweets, but I wanted to talk about Dan Lynn. The Dan Lynn era is here, guys. As Lynn starts his new post running the industry's most, uh, well, just basically just getting into uh, Netflix right here. Um, you, you know, we were kind of talking about this and, you know, I know some people were kind of worried because, you know, Dan Lynn, when it came to DC and his comments about the Snyder fandom and of course, Zach being with Rebel Moon and talking about all this, Lynn, was not looking for a new job, but then it came to an incoming call early February from Netflix's chief content officer, Bella Behera. According to two people familiar with the meeting that followed, Lynn was blunt 
in his assessment of Netflix's output. The movies were not great, and the financials didn't add up. Baharia appreciated the honesty, and shortly after, she asked Lynn if he would be open to leaving Rideback, the company the producer had spent a better part of two decades building. And of course he did, which is kind of funny. It's like, okay, so Dan Lin is going to like leaving that or is he still going to be kind of operating that? Maybe he's going to be doing that a little bit. He, uh, you know, probably appointed somebody to uh, do that. But at, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, he does make a point. But when it comes to Rebel Moon and Zack Snyder and, and, and what we have to, yeah. I mean, obviously when it comes to the first Rebel Moon, and how they're marketing that with the PG-13 cuts and then, of course, the R-rated cuts. I think it's going to be okay, even though, like, yes, he had some choice words when it came to the Snyder fandom when, it, when he was going for the DC Studios job. I think we don't have to worry because, I mean, again, Zack made Rebel Moon 1 and 2 with a very cheap budget, if you think about it. It was, what, less than 200 And he made both of those movies... And we're going to get four different kind of movies out of that. So I think, like, when it comes to financially, I think it's going to be okay. And even though it didn't get the great reviews, the stellar reviews, the first one, second one, most likely probably won't get much better when it comes to the reviews. But I think it's going to be okay because the discussion is still out there. And especially when the first one came out, the second one's going to have, there's going to be a discourse with that one too. There'll be a discourse with the director's cut. So I think we'll, we'll be okay when it comes to that. I don't think Dan Lin's going to be like, hopefully, you know, we still get that Rebel Moon Part 3. I think we'll be okay though. I think we'll be fine. But we'll see. Dan Lin. Oh boy. All right, Superman, la, 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 not legacy. We got some, uh, well, not much really coming out when it comes to Superman legacy, but something very interesting did get posted. And, like, you know, we're all anxiously awaiting to see the reveal of the costume. And to be honest, hey, hold it out as long as you want to, Jimmy Guns, because why? Why not? Why, why, why blow the load now? We're already like, we're still a year out. You might as well wait. I don't know when he's actually going to reveal the costume. I think little teases, what they're doing, utilizing social media is the best way to do it. And now we have a dog. We have David Cornsweat's dog. I think the dog's name is, uh, yeah, the dog's name is Ira. And James Gunn posted some images of the dog sitting on the director's chair that, well, looks like it's made out of a Superman costume. And I'm sure you guys saw this already, but yeah, here's a couple. Of, there's one right there. Cute dog. Cute dog. But yeah, look at the uh, the chair right there. Ah. Uh, so everybody was just kind of like, you know, holding up a, a magnifying glass going like, wait, what's going on here? What are we doing? Wait, what? There's some of this right here. And then even DCU updates posted the color palette and James Gunn said, you know, he, he I dig the color palette. So I guess we're kind of seeing some of the color palette when it comes to the Superman costume. I don't know. But yeah, so there's just that. I mean, it's nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. We're just all just kind of going like, you know, we're just hungry. We're just hungry. So you post something like that and you have that chair. So you're like, all right, the lining and the the color. But it's so funny, too, because there's two images right there where the color palette is different. But, of course, he did say he liked that one color palette. So, again, more teasing. And that's fine. You can make our balls as blue as the goddamn costume there, Jimmy Guns. Do it. Don't reveal it until who knows when. Summertime? I mean, before they actually film outside, that's a thing. But and then, of course, people are making jokes like, oh, it's the dogs. You know, that's crypto. That's real crypto right there and everything. So, you know, like I said, we're not going to get that thing for 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 a bit. We're not going to we're not going to get that reveal. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a day that's going to br bring down the Internet because, you know, there's going to be a heavy discourse on that costume. Um, I mean, I'm already like going, I, I, I'm expecting the undies. I'm expecting a shorter cape. And that's pretty much it when it comes to at least that, when it comes to the costume, I'm expecting those two things. Here's something interesting though, too, that I thought, oh, okay. I don't know how much like, uh, you know, 
hand-to-hand -hand combat Superman's going to have, but of course we have Justin Howell, who's going to be the lead stunt double when it comes to David Cornsweet. So this video right here blew up when it came to DCU updates posting it, and it's a pretty freaking amazing stunt viz previs video but i'm just kind of going like i don't know how this fits in a superman movie but whatever this is i got a superman chubby and you will too look at this all right copyright but look at this look at the stunt work right here some of the stunt work is freaking crazy Yeah, again, I don't, I'm not like going like, okay, yeah, I don't know how this applies. This is going to be applying to Superman, but some of the stunt work is just absolutely freaking crazy. I mean, my God, look at that. How do you, how, how do you not severely hurt yourself doing all this? Look at that. I mean, Jesus. Look at that. It's the kind of stuff that Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow should have been doing, but my God. Some insane stunt work right here. So yeah, there was that. That blew up over the weekend. But yeah, I'm like, good God. If somehow we can have some Superman choreography, I don't know how that's going to fit in Superman. But it's just thought it was pretty cool. Now, if that stunt crew can also be part of Batman Brave and the Bold, please be part of Batman Brave and the Bold. 100%. <sighs> How we doing out there, folks? How we doing? Dave, you are our Ken. Oh, thank you. Joker can be left outside, but Zack Snyder, Justice League Joker should be party inside. Well, I mean, it's the same Joker. Dear God, can we get... Can we let go of the Snyderverse? No, we're never going to let go of the Snyderverse. Wait a second. That's why he didn't lead DC Films, because he wouldn't give up his company. Huh, interesting, right? Purple Moon was unwatchable. All right, so Oz, Ozaria Media says unwatchable. He wants to use that buzzword. Uh, at this time, I might put people off watching the director's cuts. At this point, it might. Oh, jeez. Crypto with a C. Three colors revealed. A chair. It really is. I know. Pretty much is. And then, of course, Fabian, with all his many hashtags. Restore the Snyderverse. Fire James Gunn. Boycott Superman Legacy. Man of Steel 2 with Henry Cavill. If you want the new S Legacy T. Ooh, I know. We could probably make that right now. I mean, I made this shirt right here. And if you guys want this shirt, it's down below. My, uh, my Metalhead shirt. I actually like, yeah, because I used to. When, at one of my jobs when it was very uh, downtime and I was working with AutoCAD, I decided I was like, you know what? I'm going to make, I wanted to make shirts. And so I started doing that. The second one could be Superman smashing someone. True. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I just thought that was a cool video, at least. Those, that stunt work, that, was, that choreography was pretty freaking awesome. I will say that. Oh, Wonder Woman 3, what could have been. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted Wonder Woman 3, even after Wonder Woman 84. I didn't hate Wonder Woman 84. I, uh, you know, I rather it was like at first when I watched it, I was like, okay, I see what uh, Patty Jenkins was going for when it came to Wonder Woman 84. She was very much going like, all right, I did this version of Wonder Woman. Now I want to do this version of Wonder Woman that's very much like the TV show. Now, was that a good choice? No, it was not a good choice. <laughs> Nobody was wanting the, uh, the TV version of Wonder Woman. And I mean, let's not forget that, what, like over a decade ago or a decade ago, they, they were trying, like NBC was, they, they, were rec they were filming a pilot or something for a Wonder Woman TV show that never reached air. They just freaking canned it and wonder woman is a difficult character to put in live action let's face it just the way it is but i think patty jenkins nailed it when it came to the first one Zack snyder nailed it by incorporating his films of bbs and Zack snyder's justice league worked absolutely worked so when patty jenkins decided to take a different approach her and that guy with the ball cap we all know who that is 
there she took the approach of like trying to capture the TV show, which I thought there's some things in Wonder Woman 84 that I really enjoyed. But yeah, there's some things where you go, eh, that didn't quite work. That didn't quite work. And Linda Carter was actually a part of it, which was pretty sweet too. But yeah, now we're talking about Wonder Woman 3 and Linda Carter. Well, she was basically saying, hey, it could happen if the fans come around. Linda Carter says Wonder Woman 3 was wonderful and important, but it won't get made without pressure from fans. I don't know why they tabled it. Well, I think we all kind of know why, because if uh, Wonder Woman 84 didn't quite uh, hit with people, didn't quite do well with people, and kind of tanked with people. A lot of that. But, I mean, at the same time, we're still kind of going like, I, I wanted to know what Wonder Woman 3 was going to be all about. And now that we have a new DCU, well, let's face it, it's just not going to not going to come to be right here. So, yeah, she was interviewed by uh, Yahoo Media talking about Wonder Woman 3 and uh, taking flight at, at Warner Brothers. She described Jenkins' plans for the sequel as really interesting, wonderful, and about something important, not just your typical thing. So I kind of wonder what exactly that is. I don't think they want to do it unless there's enough pressure from fans. I just don't think they have the mind to do it. Well, they're also trying to start a new universe. And I don't understand that because it seems to me that Wonder Woman is different from other characters. She's not just a superhero. Her whole thing is about peaceful solutions. Sometimes she's not aggressive to be aggressive. It's a different story. It's about inner strength, outer strength. I don't know why they tabled it because it's a great franchise. I have to give it a lot of credit. I have to give a lot of credit to Patty and Gal because the interest in my show had peaked when they came on the scene. Their vision was intentional, and how I played the character was intentional to be good, kind, strong, and do everything for the right reasons. Even when she was angry, she was angry at the right people. We all embraced each other and were. Very great friends. Very good friends. We took the steam right out. We took the steam right out. No, we love each other and blah, blah, blah. Just talking about all, obviously all that. They aren't interested in doing any Wonder Woman for the time being. It's not an easy task with what's going on with uh, DC. And obviously this is what J uh, Jenkins talked about recently as well. Because she's kind of just kind of moved on from the whole thing as well. It's like, yeah, it's not happening. Had a story, had something right there. I do wonder what that story was. And apparently the story was supposed to be in present day, as opposed to the other two being period movies. And so I'm just kind of curious, like what, what it would have been, who would have been involved? Would it have been Cersei? I mean, who, what, what, what was going on with the mascara after the end of Zack Snyder's Justice League? Her still trying to find her home. So there's still all that. So would have been curious. I it would have been awesome if we could have gotten like a, a trilogy of Wonder Woman. Yeah, the second one, people have been like, eh, it's not that great. But it would have been kind of cool to at least get that third one. And maybe the third one would have been like, all right, now we're back. We're not doing this anymore. We're doing something like this. But yeah, it ain't gonna happen. I don't think fans are gonna be coming out to uh, you know rally to be like release Wonder Woman three, release Wonder Woman three. I think Gal's kind of done. A lot of people have turned on Gal because of obviously things that people don't that think that they think they have like knowledge on when it comes to a war that's been fighting over decades over on the other side of the world. People think that they just have a grasp on it, and if somebody they take a side, and when Gal says one thing because she's on that side, they just immediately go like, "Well, she's evil," and I I don't look at it like that. I'm I I'm just like, eh, I'm not even gonna really get into any of that. If like you think she's evil, it's fine. She's in a tough spot when it comes to all that, though, being Israeli and everything. But uh, yeah, maybe there were things that she probably should have just kept to herself, but. You know, what can you do? But yeah, no Wonder Woman 3 is going to be happening with them. But it, but it would be interesting to hear what the actual plot would have been.
Yeah. All right. Brrr. Go to that. Go to that. And we got the box office. Who saw Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire? I sure did. You guys saw my reaction and my full review, and I was pleasantly surprised by the movie. Pleasantly surprised by the first half being just like, okay, this is exactly what I expected. But then it started getting intriguing halfway through, and then that final battle was just absolutely batshit crazy, and I really enjoyed it. Absolutely enjoyed it. And projections had it lower than what it actually made. And I'm like, all right, I guess the MonsterVerse, it ain't going anywhere, folks. $80 million domestic. I think it was uh, projected at like 60, 60, 50 to 60. But yes, $80 million over the weekend and 115 international. So almost $200 million worldwide. Not too shabby. It seems like... People were just like, hey, whatever. Looks like a fun movie. And to be honest, like I said, after getting through a grueling first half, in my opinion, the second half really captured my attention. I was like, okay, I'm digging it. The sad fact of the matter is, though, when it comes to the box office, is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire had a 65.4% drop. That hurts. As a Ghostbusters fan, to me, I'm like, all right, well, it crossed $100 million, but worldwide but i think it costs 100 million so it needs to uh make over 200 million more to probably warrant another movie but at the same time i'm like well maybe there's not gonna be maybe that's gonna be it for ghostbusters movies i know there's an animated series that's gonna be coming out on netflix apparently so at least there's something with that the franchise will live on but yeah frozen empire might have just like uh might have just um Put it into the ground. I don't know if they're going to be able to resurrect that one. Sad, because it seemed like movies this year were just like, even sequels and everything like that. It seems like the drops weekend to weekend were less than 50%, and then we get Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I mean, of course, you have Godzilla and Kong. That doesn't help it. Maybe if they release it at a different date, it wouldn't have such a big drop, but you have another big blockbuster movie that comes out a week after so yeah naturally you're gonna see that's gonna affect the weekend to weekend drop so yeah that sucks to see that but what can you do right but also what i wanted to talk about i wanted to talk about this because we're all kind of worried well i wanted to talk about this because we're all kind of wondering like you know especially with the pandemic that's that happened and then with movie studio struggling box office struggling it just seemed like you know in the past like year year and a half well maybe not even the year but it just seems like this year and even though that ghostbusters frozen empire had a pretty big drop week and weekend other movies have not and other movies seem to be doing pretty well at the box office and then of course we have godzilla and kong which a lot of people thought it was going to flop i thought it was probably going to flop doesn't look like it's going to flop. But what is all the numbers? What are the numbers right now, at least when it comes to first quarter? When it comes to the first quarter of the year of 2024, how are these studios doing? Well, let's just say Disney hasn't released shit, so they're still in a struggle. Warner Brothers, look at that. Warner Brothers coming back. The ship is turning around because Warner Brothers, 483... $0.8 $0.8 million, Universal 312.1, Sony 192.2, Paramount 169.4, MGM 116.3. There's your top five right there. Disney hasn't really released anything. I think they've done re-releases. I mean, this is only the first quarter. We've got to remember, it's the first three months. The first three months. But it is kind of crazy. That, yeah, okay, so $1.5 billion, I guess you could say, has been accumulated at the box office so that's what's been happening and and, you know we still got some i mean disney is going to get their money when it comes to deadpool and wolverine not to mention there's a lot of other things so disney is not that far behind that's for damn sure when it comes to when it comes to where their box office nut is going to become they just haven't released anything yet but i think warner brothers almost had a half a billion dollars already between dune and then of course then you got uh godzilla kong i mean Maybe that, 
Warner Brothers is actually going to be doing. I mean, obviously, Legendary gets a lot of that, too, because they teamed up with them. But there you go. Warner Brothers is leading right now when it comes to 2024 and box office. Who would have thunk it, right? Even though we're all like, what's going on with Zazzy Pants? Well, look at the numbers right there. Maybe we should start buying Warner Brothers stock. Is that stock going to go up? Put some money in Warner Brothers stock? I don't know. Anyways. Speaking of Warner Brothers, The Matrix, 25 years ago. Can you believe it? 1999, The Matrix came out. 25th anniversary, and this is the movie that everybody has in their favorite. This is one of my top five favorite movies of all time. This movie changed the way we looked at movie making, cinema, action, sci-fi. It made us change the way we look at our reality. When the whole simulation thing came about when it comes to the matrix we still talk about how we might be living in a sim simulation right now who knows sometimes i catch myself going like yeah sometimes it feels that way and when i go down the rabbit hole on social media TikTok, or something like that and i see videos i start going like oh my god but it's crazy because i remember seeing the first trailer for the matrix in 1999 it wasn't in the movie theater it was super bowl sunday I was watching the Super Bowl. And I was a kid, and I remember the apartment that we were living in. Me and Mama Film Junkie were living in uh, this one apartment. I think my, I, you know, of course I'm a kid, so I wasn't like I was going to some Super Bowl party. I think, well, I don't know. I, I think I was by myself. Well, maybe, she, maybe she was there. I don't know. I just remember eating an entire bag of chips and drinking Pepsi or something. I don't know. Watching the Super Bowl, of course, watching the commercials and everything, and then seeing the TV spot for The Matrix and just going, what is that? Oh my God, I got to fucking see that. Obviously, the shot of Keanu Reeves, Neo, dodging the bullets, doing the whole thing, that's how, that's how the TV shot, the TV spot ended. And I just was like, holy crap, I cannot wait to see this movie. So when I finally saw this movie, and this is a, you know, this is some story time right here, me reflecting on when I first caught wind of the Matrix, Super Bowl Sunday, watching the Super Bowl, seeing the, the TV spot. And then when I saw it, that, you know, when it came out, it was kind of funny because it was spring break. It was spring break, 1999. I went with my one of my really good friends' family to Laughlin, Nevada. We went to not Laughlin, Nevada, and that's where I actually watched Matrix for the first time. Now, you know, you go to Laughlin, you're a kid, you're a teenager, obviously you can't gamble, you can't drink, can't do anything, but there's arcades and, you know, they gave us free range to just be like, you know, if you've ever been to Laughlin, there's a river right there, you could take a little boat rides to each casino and just kind of walk around. It was fun, a lot of fun. And the movie, uh, uh, there was a movie theater in the hotel that we actually were staying at, the casino hotel that we were staying at. And I think it was late at night, it was late on a Saturday, I was like, I got to see this movie. God damn it. Let's go see this movie. And, the, and I was like suggesting, hey, let's go see The Matrix. Let's go see The Matrix. So we go to the movie. It's late at night. It's late. It's like 10 o'clock at night. We decided to go see it. So we got my friend's two parents, his mom and dad, and his brother and his brother's girlfriend. We all just, you know, the, the, the movie theater was wide open. There wasn't many people there. So we all just kind of sat in different spots. So me and my, my friend, we sat in a certain spot and everybody else sat in different spots. So probably about mm, a half, like a half hour into the movie, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, we noticed that they're gone. His parents and his brother and his brother's girlfriend left the movie theater. They were no longer there. So we were like, all right, that's weird. And my buddy kept looking at his watch. He was kind of bored. Me? I was all in, man. I was all in on this movie. Like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then, of course, that final, the, obviously the, the final act is just absolutely batshit crazy when it comes to The Matrix. And then we, like, the next day or something like that. Again, okay, so, yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of bad because it's like, oh, well, you just left two teenagers by themselves in a movie theater. But it's like, oh, the movie theater was in the hotel, in the casino, we were fine. It's fine. You know, it's not like nowadays where, you know, you got to worry about mon like big time monsters out there now. But 
it was funny because we when we talked to them like the next day or even late, it might have even been later that night. They were like, yeah, we had no idea what the fuck was going on in that movie. We said, screw it. And they left, even though they paid for the movie and they walked out, they walked out. And I w- we were telling them like, yeah, you should have waited because it gets pretty damn crazy. And the action sequence at the end, it's just absolutely bad shit crazy. You should have waited. And it's funny too, because later that year when, it, when Matrix came out on video, I remember going to my friend's house and his brother who walked out of the movie theater had it on and he was like, Jesus Christ, this movie's insane. And I'm like, yeah, we tried to tell you, but you guys didn't give it a chance. But it's just kind of funny how high concept the Matrix was where people were literally just going, I don't give a shit. I'm like walking out of this thing. I, I don't want to even... Try to understand what is happening here. But check this out. Look at this artwork right here from Richard Phil Pot Pot Art right here. I saw this on my feed. And, uh, I mean, come on. This is absolutely beautiful art right here for just the first Matrix, showing both sides, inside the Matrix, and then, of course, in the real world right here. That's just cool. Just really cool art right there. So go, good job, Richard. But yeah, The Matrix, groundbreaking, the whole bullet time thing, which everybody was trying to mimic and not really doing a great job at it. Some people have. But yeah, it was uh, groundbreaking. It's iconic. It will always go down as just it changing cinema and the way we look at things. You know, and I don't give a shit. I think the whole the whole trilogy is absolutely fantastic. Of course, the first one's the best one, but I still love the entire Trilogy. That's right. How are we feeling out there? I'm doing pretty good, that DCEU fan. Good to see you. Revolutionary plagiarism. Okay. It seems like Osiria Oz- <laughs> Media, you have a lot of negativity when it comes to this. So what are we talking about that's plagiarism? Is it the Matrix that's plagiarism? Now, are we going to kill that too? I agree. I know those guys stole the idea. Just saying what the movie did. They stole the idea? Which movie are you talking about? Are we talking about The Matrix out there? Okay. Also, don't forget, everyone, that this Wednesday is going to be uh, Danny Phantom's 20th anniversary, which is coming up. I never got into Danny Phantom. So the fans didn't and won't come around. Yeah, they won't come around. You're talking about Wonder Woman, of course. All right. But yeah, happy uh, anniversary to them, to uh, the Matrix. You guys want to see something cool before we get into the questions? You know, something I saw when I when I went to uh, when I went to go see uh, Godzilla Kong. I shit you not. And being a Ghostbusters fan, I had to take a picture of this. But I saw this in the parking lot of the movie theater. Look at that. Look at that. Somebody actually made their Honda Accord, I think it is. An Ecto an Ecto 1, I guess you could say. They decked it out, making it look like an Ecto 1. But yeah, I saw this in the freaking parking lot. And I was like, that is cool. So yeah, I saw like a a, a more miniature Ecto 1 right there in the parking lot. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. All right, Twitter questions. We got Ruthie right here. Matrix question, Dave, red or blue pill? Red pill all the way, of course. The red pill and blue pill represent a choice between the willingness to learn a potentially unsettling or life-changing truth by taking the red pill or remaining in the contented the contented experience of ordinary reality with the blue pill. Nah, you always take the red pill. It's always about the red pill. And I hate that that's now utilized as like a political thing now, and I hate that. But, yeah, I'm all about the red pill. I take that fucking red pill in an instant. We got Axel right here. Hey, Dave, ever thought of doing a Marvel fanimated stream with shows like, yeah, I mean, eventually we might get there, but we have so much when it comes to DC. Also, these are some great drawings, too. I like that Batman drawing right there. I dig it. I dig it. I always like it when the cape goes over the shoulders. Something cool about that, but yeah, that that's a cool drawing right there. 
Good job. Good job, my friend. Eric. Hey, Dave. On Wednesday... On Wednesday is the Disney shareholder meeting. Sparks are flying, weapons are loaded, and the fight is to bring Iger and the studio into accountability. It's the moment of truth. Can Iger save his own ass? I don't think he can. I really don't think he can. <laughs> oh man. And I'll tell yeah, and I'll tell I saw a thing like that 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 you know, Indiana Jones and the the Dial of Destiny probably cost Disney over $200 million, up to $250 million. They lost that much money with the Dial and Destiny because of how much they put into it and, of course, didn't get the return that they were thinking it might get. Darkness under the wind. Dave, question one. If the rumor on the Venom symbiote returning and leeching on to Peter in Spider-Man 4 is true, when should we take it off? When when should he take it off? Secret Wars, Spider-Man. Well, I mean, they have the black suit in Secret Wars, right? I don't know. I don't know when he should take it off. That's a good question. Does DC have a lesser chance of beating Marvel next year with the Batman 2 delayed? I mean, I think they I think I mean, I think it's DC's turn to be like the big the big daddy eventually. Mr. Nobody, hey Dave, happy April Fools. Would you like to see a TV series of The Matrix? There were hints that something was in the works, but I guess since uh, Matrix 4 unfortunately flopped, that's not going to happen. But who knows? Can you imagine a Game of Thrones style Matrix series? I mean, it would be pretty sweet. They could probably do something like that. I don't think the franchise is fully dead. I actually enjoyed Matrix Resur Resurrections. Devon Wooter, hey Dave, I just watched X-Men 1, a good movie. Do you have a favorite scene for me? It was Wolverine versus uh, Mystique. Yeah, I would agree with that one. Do you think Marvel should be worried about James Gunn if his DC universe do well? And I'm certain now, like I said, I think every I think if it does well, the whole genre does well. And I'm surprised you like the new Godzilla. Eh, I mean, I didn't like all of it, but I I liked the second half. Edward, hey Dave, what you expecting from Creature Commandos this fall as it's the start of the DCU on the TV side of things? Yeah, I think it might be a, hopefully it's a funny, dark, animated shit, you know? Uh, Dave, Adrian, Dave, would you like to see Wonder Woman 3? I mean, at one point I did, but I'm kind of over it now. On behalf of both, whether it be under Snyder or Gunn, uh, I mean, I think I'm kind of over it now. I do like the idea of what, you know, with the whole like prequel kind of thing, I kind of like that. So I don't know. That's just kind of how I'm feeling. I, I, I've i already kind of like, you know, expected it to not happen. So I think I've already come to terms with that. So I saw The Matrix for the first time a couple years back and it blew me away. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Israel just needed some revolution. Uh, oh. Just needed to say it if we are going to call it revolutionary. Oh, okay. Who are you going to call Ghostbusters in real life? Over the shoulder capes are so regal. Yeah. If Superman is good, DC's off to a great start. We got Penguin coming too. That's right. Dark animated what? All right. I don't know what that means, but uh, yes. Penguin is coming. That's for damn sure. Cannot wait for that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this up. You guys are awesome. Thank you for spending some time with me. Always fun. And make sure you uh, hit that like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Do all that. Share it. Follow me on all the sock meds. It's all around me. If you want to support the channel, we got the Patreon. I'll probably be posting something uh, exclusively on there for uh, tomorrow for sure. And... Uh, and then, of course, you know, you got the membership program. If you want to do that for the channel, do that as well. But uh, really appreciate you guys spending some time with me. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you, uh, Taladia, for saying great stream. Good to see, of course, Marvel, Mr. Nobody, Black Red, everybody. You guys are awesome. See you guys on Wednesday to talk more nonsense. All right. Bye.